Dun dun dun, Uncle L here. We'll go over some quick, uh, what I use for catfishing. Uh, this is not the mosquito spray, but Max 40, deep, high maximum. I do go out at night, sometimes during the day, but never leave home without it. Your light. Make sure you read out all your light. The bugs love the, the white light. Not so much the red. Cuts down on your insects flying around your head. Uh, usually carry mostly all redded out light. What's next? Glow sticks, zip ties. Good combination, let you know if you're getting a bite. I do use the bells every once in a while. So the first setup we'll go over is jigs. Last year I discovered jigging for catfish. Oh man. Two weeks straight I didn't use any worms, anything. I just went straight jigs and scent bait. Or, or that scent. I throw on a little scent sometimes, but sometimes they didn't need it. So that's the first box right here. We'll show you that. Curly tails, paddle tails. I didn't get that much of an effort. There was a nice female that I pulled in on this one. But, yeah, just not much action on that. Here's another paddle tail I tried out. Ooh, a little bait hook in here. So, Eagle Claw makes the paddle bug. A little light on the hook. Uh, Southern Pros, the wide gap's probably what I had the most success on, and that's a pretty stout hook. So, I have most of the luck on the dual tails. And you just bounce this on the bottom. Under this bridge, I knew every bump, every snag, and sometimes you had to worry because they would grab it and they would act like a snag because they're dug in and they didn't move. And you're like, what the crap? And then all of a sudden, whoosh, 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 all hell would break loose. So, Southern Pro, and I can't remember who made this. I think it was Freshwater something cricket, mud cricket. Who knows? But it seems like the dual tail versus the curly tail. Here's a weird one. I didn't catch any on this, but they didn't seem to like the curly tail. Maybe I'll pop this off and see what happens next year. But that was the funnest time of my life. Did the Uncle L modification, jig modification on this. The crappie niblets or the crappie magnets. See that dual tail? I don't know what they like or hate about that, but they were killing it. Put some crappie niblets. Um just for a little extra scent. My next favorite setup would be under a bobber during the daytime running two jigs. So you would have two jigs under this bobber different levels and uh, put a worm on it. Some of the biggest catfish I've seen during the day were off this setup. Two jigs with curly tails and a worm. Man, they love that setup. Nighttime, you got your lighted bobbers, the one from Walmart, the one that looks like a chili pepper. SBBW is sort of dialing that in, and it seems like, I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing something, and then the bobber will flip up. I've never seen it happen. i got to watch, see what he's doing. But they have a lighted bobber. That seems to work. Heavier jigs, cut bait. But, and sometimes under that lighted bobber because it's so heavy they're just nibbling on this and I just got lucky and I go you know what something's on that because it was it was barely moving maybe like that and it was a little bit wavy and I set the hook and there he was like a six pounder so jig wise that's what you need bobber wise you got your assortments anything and everything This is the wiper box slash catfish box. You got your bells, you got your bait needles, your assortment of hooks, worm hooks, owners. 
I haven't had much success on these, but they were cheap. A staple, Gamagatsu octopus hooks. If you can afford the expensive stuff, I get it on discount through a local outlet. Fast hatches. So the next setup, so we covered that. Two jigs under a bobber there. So the next setup is you got your typical egg, egg sinker, and then you got your swivel, then you got your hook. This one seems to get caught up a lot. This is the redneck setup. So, what they were doing is they had their hook and they had the bullet sinker right on top of the knot. So it was just resting there. And I'm like, those guys ain't catching anything. Kill the mud cats and the channel cats. It was amazing. So this setup right here, with your hook right there, kills it. And so that's pretty much what I've been using. And this sort of bounces off the rocks and doesn't get snagged as much versus the egg sinker. So I pretty much phased out the egg sinker out of my setup. Not saying it worked, but for bottom fishing. So what I generally do is, this one doesn't have the bobber stops in here. So I use the egg sinker and sometimes I'll keep it two to three inches, but it'll slide back down. And that bobber stop, the rubber one, will stop on there. You can get the bobber stops to basically fit your lines. We got some here. Usually they go two to four, four to eight, but that's just right there. And so you can make a little bit of space on that, usually maybe two to four inches. But it usually ends back up there when you're reeling it in. And it protects the knot, especially if you're in a fight. Your next setup is the drop shot. One of my new favorite ones is this, I don't know what these are called. I got them in the three-fourths, one ounce, half ounce. And uh, Northland Tackle makes these bottom bouncers. I haven't tried those out yet. But I got assortment of those. Different sizes of bullet sinkers. Uh, those look a little on the light side. There's that black one. That's about the right size I like. Rarely use the swivels, but just in case. The Matsu hooks, the bait hooks with the sickle in them. Make sure they have the sickle. Killers. Uh, different type of uh, worms. I think those are kale hooks. Uh, haven't caught any fish on that uh, liver setup yet, but I got that in there. Your alarm bells and your glow sticks. And uh, let's see what we got here. So this setup right here was killing it. So we used this modification on the Uncle L where we, uh, Uncle L jigs, where we put that spring in there and packed some power bait and whatever. About four years ago, my buddy was fishing with the orange pulp gold. And he was landing the mud cat. So yesterday we went out and tested it. We're using the drop shot method. And this actually pulled in the white bass and the mud cats. So I had my piece of cut bait on there, which was white bass. You could probably use shrimp would be another option. Check your regulations on the white bass, but worm. But we had that on there. And I think that added a little bit of extra hookups. I think I came in second place catfishing yesterday. But I think that was the most successful. So that's on the drop shot. Then you have your line running down. This KVD fast hatch just gives it an extra wiggle wobble. And I've been incorporating that. Also yesterday we were trying out. I caught a few fish on the bottom of that. So that's going to be a hopeful for this year. Again, put the spring on, Uncle L modification. Then I put my worm, or I was using the cut bait yesterday. And I got a few pickups on that one. So it was about 50-50 on the drop shot and the bottom. But this one, I incorporated it with 
right above it. They, they were just picky as hell. I just put a drop shot hook above it, added a little bit more. I tried these spin shots, uh, channel straighten that one out, and that's a pain in the ass to retie. I was using this one, the standout. Caught a few on those. I think the hook shank, I had the smaller version, was a little bit too short. But I'm have high hopefuls for the bottom rig for this next year, this year. But that's in there. Uh, did I leave anything out? Not really. Yeah, it's mostly just trial and error, mosquito spray. I'm gonna probably throw this on this little fancy of Fluger. But 12 pound test, a good reel. And my poles would be the Rhinos. Cabela's has them for $9.99. They're a little soft, maybe an ugly stick. I haven't had, I think I have one or two ugly sticks left. Um, let's see, hold on a second. This one's pretty recommended. It's, I only had about six months testing time on this, but this has been holding up. I like these jaw bones. Usually they're at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. And an inside joke, Alan finally approves of dicks. Because <laughs> they're a salt rifle band. But this jawbone is um, 6 foot 6. Line goes up to 8 to 14 pounds. I've been using like 6 pound tests on this. But pretty good. And medium action. The rhinos have a little, they're like an ultra light, but with the thick heaviness lug you'll see him bend the crap out of that that's sometimes good for wipers or the hard bite that way it lets them run and really swallow it get it inside their lip sometimes they're pretty picky and they feel the drag of the pole so this one has some pretty stiff action on it so i didn't take this yesterday and i should have and i'd have probably had a higher hookup ratio but that, 12 pound test mono, um, I really don't use braid because there's a lot of snags and if I could just snap it off, usually the mono does a pretty good job. Reels, I got that Fluger Summit, I uh, got this old school Sahara. Optics is probably one of my favorites. I don't know why. If someone says, Oh yeah, you want to get a sponsorship? Optics? Hell yeah. And it's what I use most of the time. It doesn't really matter. Good poll though. And I think this is going to be my... Try this out for the pre-spawn or the spawn catfish jigging. Maybe that's going to be... I was using the... What was I using? A Fenwick Ultra Light last year, <laughs> but I think I pulled in too many kitty cats and broke it. A good net, usually helpful. Uh, this is in the mid range for mostly. I don't think this would apply for uh, flatheads, but this is mostly channel and mud cats in our area. But yeah, this jawbone's pretty reliable. Used it for bobber fishing for crappies. A little bit on the white bass and around 12 to 15 dollar range it's not bad so as everything fishing's endless so different combinations different whatevers it's all irrelevant in the big game of fishing use whatever you want and you'll probably catch a fish uncle l's out <laughs>